blessings keep falling in my lap I don't make songs for free, I make them for freedom Don't believe in kings, believe in the kingdom Chisel me into stone prayer, whistle me into song air Dying laughing with Krillin saying something about blonde hair Jesus black life ain't matter, I know I talk to his daddy Say you the man of the house now, look out for your family He has ordered my steps, gave me a sword with a crest And gave Donnie a trumpet in case I get shortness of breath Don't be mad I'm gon' praise him Praise him till I'm gone When the praises go up Good God The blessing come down Good God When the praises go up oh. Good God The blessings come down The blessings come down When the praises go up oh. Keep oh. The blessings come down lap. The blessings come down When the praises go up Come down. Good God! They booked the nicest hotels on the 59th floor With the big wide windows, with the suicide doors Ain't no blood on my money, ain't no Twitter in heaven I know them drugs isn't close, ain't no visit in heaven I know the difference in blessings and worldly possessions Like my ex-girl getting pregnant and her becoming my everything I'm at war with my wrongs, I'm writing four different songs I never forged it or forfeited, I'm a force to be reconciled, they want four minute song You need a four hour praise dance, performed every morn I'm feeling shortness of breath, so Nico grab you a horn Hit Jericho with the buzzer beater to end the quarter Watch brick and mortar fall like dripping water, uh
rest of my gravity through off reality You brought back the butterflies Oh, oh You brought back the butterflies Oh, 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 oh You brought back the butterflies Please rise. to give her away apparently. <laughs> Good evening. Today I have the honor and privilege on behalf of Arlene and Tim to welcome you to this joyous occasion. We are here today in support and love for our two friends as they invite us to celebrate together with them the covenant of marriage. Let me take your bride. A wise man once told me, anything worth doing is worth starting and ending with prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this amazing moment. Thank you for how you brought these two lives together. May the words they say, may the vows they exchange today become buried deep within their souls. May this moment honor you, God. We love you and we thank you for being with us here today. Will you please remain standing as we enter into a time of praise and worship?
of your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend Oh, I have lived in the goodness all my life. Scripture tells us that a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. After God made the first woman and entrusted two persons becoming one new entity, Ooh, there we go, one man and one woman forming the most fundamental human relationship in God's created world, a relationship even more fundamental than the parent and child relationship, a covenant relationship. A man will leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. Under God, she is now his most fundamental commitment. And so also the woman leaves her father's house to establish a new family unit with her husband. And under God, he is now her most fundamental commitment. Now I've had the pleasure of getting to know Tim and Arlene over the past few years. Tim and I were, uh, we call it slinging chicken back in the day for a few years. I'm surprised we actually didn't meet any earlier uh, with all the travel we were doing. But I have the privilege of watching this man grow in love. Now a quick story about his love. Now how many of you all know his dog, Tommy? Many of us know Tommy. and. Honestly, Tommy's not that hard of a dog to love. <laughs> There's a few of us that might beg to differ, but it's okay. But I watched for months and honestly years, Tommy learn to come under the mission of Tim and just be obedient to Tim, although he kind of has his own way of doing things. But Tim learned to love that dog. 
Many of you guys know the story of that dog, and Tim loved that dog so well. It was just a picture of Tim's determination, a picture of Tim's love, a picture of how Tim is bold and fierce, and no matter what the case may be, I want Arlene's family to know that Tim's going to love Arlene with a boldness and a fierceness that you may not have seen in your own families before. That's the kind of guy he is. And Arlene, we got to know each other a little bit, and we bonded through our love of Tommy. Um, <laughs> Quick story, uh, Tommy once tried to eat my food, um, and for those of you who know me, I don't play about my food. Anyway, uh, but Arlene, I, I watched Arlene come into a relationship with Tim with a lot of unknowns, a lot of questions. Matter of fact, one of the first times we met, we sat down for about 45 minutes, and it was question after question, after question, after question, after question, after question, probably eight more questions about Tim and who he is and is he a good guy and can I trust him and all those things. And what was fun was not only did that conversation go well, but Arlene and I had time as she was studying for a test, I would question her about what she was doing in life and I got to learn more about just the beautiful person she is. And that same tenacity she had for school and getting things done, the same tenacity she had of trying new things and being willing and open to just allow new things into her life. As many of us know, Tim, Full -time, is a full-time streamer. And that was the thing Arlene immediately said no to. The first time we talked, she said, I don't think I can do that. Well, here we are. Arlene's gonna love Tim with a love so great, so deep, that as Tim leads and they try new things, she's gonna be right there with him, lockstep, cheering him on. She's gonna be strong where he's weak. And I can't wait to see how you guys continue to grow in marriage. I've witnessed them both grow as individuals, as a couple, they're doing their best to honor God by obeying his word, and done such a great job at reaching the next generation. It's a beautiful thing. I'm proud to know them, proud to be on this journey of following Jesus with them. Now, I've been to many weddings and I've seen a lot of different things, and so I'm, I'm actually really excited we're outside this evening um, because I was at a w previous wedding, and the family afterwards, they took photos. And they took photos, and they went to the reception, and the, and the cameramen were out there just asking folks if they want to, hey, do you want a picture to memorize this occasion? And beautiful pictures, beautiful family. But where the family took photos, where the bride and groom stood, they stood underneath a verse in, in the book of Luke that says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. <laughs> and so we don't have to worry about that today, <laughs> which is really good, really good. Now, I'm sure they know a little bit more about what they're doing today than maybe that couple did. I'm sure, actually, since this is their second time getting married, they, they, I actually don't know if you guys know what you're doing. You're back up here. It's, it's fine. It's fine. The truth is, no one knows what the future holds for sure, because the future is full of surprises, some that we're ready to accept and some we might not want to come our way. But the truth is that you have taken the time to test your commitment and your love to one another. You've taken your relationship seriously. Chrissy, I, and others have noticed a difference in how you've matured as a couple. And today we want to come together with family and friends alike to celebrate the covenant of your love. Now I have the, the special privilege, Tim and Arlene just told me I, I can take the mic and talk for as long as I want to, so you're at my mercy for the next hour. I'm kidding, just 10 to 15 minutes. You've heard me mention the word covenant a few times this evening. And I want to just define that for you really quickly in this context. It's that regardless of what you do, I will. So regardless of what Arlene does, Tim will. And regardless of what Tim does, Arlene will. The sacred covenant between you two and God has specific conditions and instructions, but as you obey those conditions and instructions, God promises that he will bless you. This binding commitment is important to remember as tests and trials come, because they will. I'm willing to bet that before this night is over, before you guys go home, that one of you will sin against another. It happens. We're human, and we love each other, and it's part of life. This covenant is for the tough times. This covenant is for the times where you don't want to talk to your wife, when you don't want to talk to your husband. And you have to remember this promise today. Mark 10, 9 tells us that what God has joined together, let not man separate. God means for the two to become one. 
and not for the one to be torn apart into two. Sin is going to challenge the harmony of your relationship. But like I said, this is what this covenant is for. So how do we avoid this potential tearing apart? Well, if you will, I'd just like to go back to Matthew chapter 4, 19, where God tells us to follow him, and he will make us fishers of men. That call is for everyone here this evening. We have an opportunity to follow Jesus, be changed by him, and then ultimately be on mission with him as his disciples. This Christ emptied himself, came down in the form of man, and lived a life that we can follow. We abide by his teaching and principles, and we can learn from him. And in the following, he transforms us to change us, to mold us more into his image. So that as we go, we can be on mission with him, being his disciples and making disciples. So when Jesus called his disciples to follow him, he invited them into a life of purpose, a life of commitment, a life of transformation. And in your marriage, God is calling you to a life of purpose, a life of commitment, and a life of transformation. There's going to come a point in time down the road where you're going to look at your significant other and go, you don't look the same, like the same person that I married. And that's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a good thing. We are, as disciples, to be a reflection of Christ's grace and mercy. So when we're at odds with one another, we go to each other. Not to our peanut gallery. Hey, we love y'all. We do. But they go to each other first. Then they're going to seek godly counsel. This is your teammate. In Colossians 3, scripture tells us that whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. So God's call to a wife is to affirm, to receive, and nurture her husband's loving leadership as he follows Christ. Her husband is unique to her. Arlene's not to submit to just any man, just her husband. And her submission to Tim won't be absolute. Her ultimate allegiance is to Jesus Christ and to submit under his authority, just as is for Tim. And as the husband is obedient to Christ and self-sacrificial like Christ, he and she will thrive together in this dance of marriage as she affirms and strengthens him and makes him a better man than he could ever be without you. Arlene is to be strong where Tim is weak. That's what it means to submit, to come under the mission of one another. So if we continue in Colossians 3, 19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh to them. God's specific call to the husband is to love his wife. Love is not just spontaneous. It's not just random actions of affection. It is that, but it's so much more. It's also covenant allegiance and sacrificial action. In a husband's worst moments, they're going to be tempted to be passive and harsh. What his wife needs from him and what God calls him to as the man is gentleness, not harshness, and activity, not passivity. Not passivity. Gentleness doesn't mean weak. It means strength under control. It means strength under submission. And we know you can be strong. You can be gentle because you are strong. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul charges husbands to love their wives and give themselves up for her, just as Christ himself gave himself up for the church. So every believer, male and female, is called to die by their flesh and live for Christ, to follow and be changed by him. But the call to give oneself up for another as Christ did for the church is unique to marriage and isolated to the husband. Wives aren't told to die for their husbands as Christ died. Wives have their own charge. Dying is the husband's job. A few verses later, God says that marriage is a mystery. He's not saying that it's confusing and that we can't figure out what it means. What he's saying is that it was a mystery. And now thanks to the death, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, marriage is no longer a mystery. So what mystery? What mystery are we talking about? Why one man and one woman covenanted to each other as long as they both shall live? Why did God do it this way? Why build human society this way? The answer is that thousands of years before he sent his son, God embedded a pointer to Jesus in the very basics and fabrics of human life. From the beginning, God knew he would send his son to save us from our sin. And he designed marriage to anticipate that, to prepare the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The meaning of marriage is that Jesus has given his life for his people, his bride. The call of a husband to lead by giving and not by taking shows us Jesus, who did not protect himself and his comfort, but sacrificed himself for us. Jesus is the husband who does not claim special privilege, but shoulders more responsibility to love his bride with affection, allegiance, and action. And Tim, your responsibility is to love your bride with affection, allegiance, and action. It was important that the three of us standing here before you all hear the gospel message this, this evening. God has given us the ultimate example of a covenant. Regardless of what you do, I will. In Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. In Romans 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tells us, For by grace we are saved through faith. It's not, a, uh, not of ourselves. It's a free gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. It's nothing that we do. It's a free gift from God. In Romans 5, 8, it says, But God showed his love for us that in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In a verse you all very well may know, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In his love for us, God has granted us a free will and a choice to accept this gift and enter a relationship with him. To be his disciple, one who is following, who is being changed by, and is on mission with Christ. So today, not only are we inviting you to celebrate the marriage between Tim and Arlene, we also invite you into a beautiful, life-changing covenant with Jesus Christ. I hit my mark. I only went 11 minutes, so we're good. Let's get y'all married. Can y'all face each other? In Genesis 2, we see that God says it's not good that man should be alone. In fact, it's the first time that the words not and good were paired together in Scripture, and that was before sin entered the world. God gives us the blessing of marriage, and because it is not good for us to be alone, he created us to love one another. His desire for you is to love him and love one another. And today, Tim, he's giving you Arlene, and Arlene, he's giving you Tim. We're told that a life worth living, a life so alive that it has the capacity to extend beyond this lifetime, is built on our connection with God. So in joining each other in marriage and having the sort of marriage that is full of life, it hinges on this connection and relationship as well. So I'm inviting the two of you today to center your lives both individually and collectively on God so that you can live out Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. that says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. God is the ultimate authority in both of your lives and in your marriage covenant. So this being said, I challenge you to resolve yourselves to this decision that this marriage is forever. Now I know you guys have taken some time personally to write your own vows and we're gonna do a vow exchange. You guys have them with you? You guys ready? Yeah. All right, go for it. I'll go first. Oh, it's sweaty. <laughs> Arlene, Arlene Courtney, Courtney Kai. Kai. I can't, I can't believe. believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we're here again. <laughs> <laughs> if they get lucky, most, most people, people get to marry the love of their life. life. But, but I get to do it twice. twice. Throughout life's life journey, journey, I've had a lot of first experiences, some that some we that might, might not have shared. shared but you will always be my first, and my always. It's actually me. You'll always be my last, and my always. I was like, that doesn't make sense, but recovery. Anyways, <laughs> my last. You'll be my last date. You'll be my last kiss, my last marriage, and my last thing, love. My always. I will always seek to understand first. I will always listen first. I will always encourage, always support, and do the dishes. If there's something that I learned in the past year of being married, it is sometimes I can drop the ball. I know that I can't do this on my own, and I promise that I will seek God first and His will and His best for us. I will lead our family in the principles of God 
and cherish and protect you as his daughter. Another page. I am glad that God did not give me what I wanted in a partner, but rather what I needed. He has exceeded my expectations and given me above and beyond what I deserve. My forever started with you over three years ago, and I will always choose to love you every day. I tried to write it in the book and I didn't have enough time so I ran in like as I was standing ready to come out to find my phone so here we go okay if you know me I'm someone who likes to ask a lot of questions <laughs> growing up how'd you know was my favorite question and asking questions is likely what made our first date last longer than you were expecting it to in my faith asking God questions of why became a painful part of my relationship with him I felt like he was always withholding from me, giving me the short end of the stick. God may not always reveal his why, but I want to tell you all a story of a time when he did, the story of when we met. But it doesn't start in 2021 when we actually met. It starts back in 2017 when I was going through the worst breakup of my life. At that same time, you found out you were waitlisted from nursing school, bringing you to Houston, the city we would eventually meet. A few years later, in 2020, you were going through your own worst breakup, and I was receiving my rejection from my dream PA school, bringing me to Houston, the city where our story would begin. God doesn't always move in ways we want, but it's now looking back that I can see that God was using some of the most painful moments of my life to lead me to what would be the most joyous. Through our story, I've seen God's hand at work, through our relationship, I've learned to trust God. And through you, I've experienced God's love. Now this is the part I didn't say at the first wedding. So now this part you haven't heard before. <laughs> Timothy Caleb Wong. Our first wedding was simple, small, but meaningful. And that's what I've grown to love about our marriage. The everyday commitment to loving and serving each other better. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 is often read at weddings as a reminder and something to work towards. But I am blessed that God has gave me a man that is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Ooh, I'm going to cry now. Okay. You are patient. You are kind. You do not envy. You do not boast. You are not proud. You do not dishonor others. You are not self-seeking. You are not easily angered. You keep no records of wrong. You do not delight in evil, but rejoice in the truth. You always protect, always trust, always hope, and you always persevere. Your love is a steady kind of love, an anchor in the waves and a harbor in the storm. You make me a better person, and you balance me out. This past year was one of the hardest years I've gone through, and not because of the wedding planning. <laughs> <laughs> During those hardest times, I couldn't imagine going through it all without you by my side. Thank you for all the dishes you've washed, all the clothes you've folded, all the meals you've cooked, and all the ways you served me that I may not even know about. I vow to continue to pursue being a better wife. I vow to do my best at doing more dishes. I vow to serve you, support you, and love you. And I vow to never stop pursuing the Lord with you. Do we have the rings? Yes. No, hold it. Good. Oh, good. <laughs> Gross. Ugh. I can take that if you don't. Okay. I'll put it there for now. <laughs> you want to hold for the now. <laughs> for now. For now. Grab the rings. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh. I know. Yeah, I know. The wedding ring is a symbol. In the church, the circle has always reminded us of the eternity of God who has no beginning and no end. This ring is a symbol of the unbroken love of God, which too has no beginning and no end. The ring symbolizes your commitment of life for one another 
It symbolizes your love freely given that has no beginning and no end. No giver and no receiver, for each is giver and each is receiver. May these rings that you exchange today forevermore remind you of your vows on this very day and God's eternal love for you. So, give this to you. So would you repeat after me? Yeah. yeah. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. And with all that I am, and with, with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I have, I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nice. Yeah, Arlene, your turn. You gotta do this too. La la la. <laughs> Repeat after me, Arlene. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You give them a hand. So really quickly, we're getting to that point, but congregation, I just have a challenge for you all. Bridesmaids, groomsmen, you as well. You guys are not spectators. You're not spectators. You're participants. The responsibility of the bride and groom's friends and family is not limited to just showing up today. It's a commitment today that you're making to be with them through life's trials and, and tests. There's going to be a time where they're going to need support. They may even need to be carried. Romance is only going to get them so far. They're going to need folks to help them stand. So one quick question for you, and if you could just answer with, I will. Will you support, listen, offer godly counsel, celebrate, encourage, and remind them of this day? Ooh, good job, y'all. All right, we're getting to that point. Tim and Arlene, you have expressed your love by exchanging vows. You have symbolized your commitment to each other by exchanging rings two times. Um, and so I have one more question of each of you. Tim, will you take Arlene to be your wife, promising to love her, honor her, keep her for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, and to be faithful only to her for as long as you both shall live? I will. Arlene, do you take Tim to be your husband, or will you take Tim to be your husband, promising to love him, honor him, and keep him for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, and to be faithful only to him for as long as you both shall live? I will. God, we praise you, especially on this day for Tim and Arlene. As their friends and family, may we commit ourselves to loving and supporting them in their new life together. We ask that you, God, continue to draw their hearts continuously closer, not only to each other, but most importantly to you. May their marriage forever be an outpouring of their passion for you. Amen. And for the moment we've all been waiting for, Tim, you may now kiss your bride. Ooh, yeah. hey. Ladies and gentlemen, by the power vested in me, I would love to present to you Mr. and Mrs. You always on time. Remember when you got me out there. You got me out there. And now I see your blessings, see your blessings every day Thankful that your kingdom's on the way Angels all around me, hear them sing like Oh, I'll never get used to this I'll never get used to this This is how I want to live Forever we'll be singing like Oh, walk about the grave, yeah, I'm alive now the devil, boy, you out of time now Spirit moving in me on my fire now I know it won't ever die, I will never die And now I see your blessings, see your blessings every day Thankful for that your kingdom's on the way Angels all around me, hear them say like oh, I'll never get used to this I'll never get used to this this is how I want to live Forever we'll be singing like oh, 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 I'll never get used to this mm, yeah. From the morning 
to the evening I could sing your praise all day From the prison to the garden You're the God who's breaking chains When I look back on my whole life There's a silver lining of grace I can't wait to take you, Jesus I'll never get used to this I'll never get used to this Really quickly, just a couple of announcements before you all head out You guys can go, sorry one family just going to ask that you guys stay for photos. Um, you guys who know who you are, you're going to stay for photos. The second thing is the Butterfly House. Um, it's available for everyone to explore and take pictures. Tim and Arlene would love for you guys to take some time and go walk the Butterfly House. Um, Tim has been preserving and catching butterflies as a hobby, and it's one of the biggest ways that God has revealed himself in his life. So please enjoy that. Our third announcement this evening is that we've got a cocktail hour on the veranda right in front of where we're gonna have the reception so you can hang out there. And then the, the last thing, the reception starts at six. So that's when, hey, you can do all the photos and everything you want. Y'all be blessed. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, I was stuck inside that grave a long time. Didn't think I'd make it through those long nights. But you never late, you always on time. Remember when you got me out there, you got me out there And now I see your blessings, see your blessings every day Thankful that your kingdom's on the way Angels all around me, hear them sing like Oh, I'll never get used to this I'll never get used to this This is how I wanna live Forever we'll be singing like Oh, Walk about the graveyard, I'm alive now 